Hey, I'm welcoming you in Smart Bird Talks, where we're discussing exciting and trending topics with software testing experts. We are returning to you after a short break with some great news. We are so excited to announce a new series of interviews. You might remember the seven common API testing mistakes series that we did last year with Robert Schneider, a software testing consultant from Wise Clouds, a strategic Smart Bear partner, and this time we will continue talking about API testing with Robert, but we will mostly concentrate on API load tests. So, hi Robert, how are you today? Hi, hello everybody. It's great to be back, especially during these uh, crazy times that we're all living in. I hope everybody out there is well and staying yeah. safe and really happy to be back to talk about the next series of topics in these uh, in this uh, interviews. Hopefully you're finding them interesting. So shall I give a brief overview of the things we're going to cover over the next few episodes, Tatiana? Yeah. Tatiana? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Sure. So we're going to be talking about some of the most common API performance testing problems that we're seeing. We talked last time about some of the most challenging API testing problems that we've seen. Now we've taken it a different level, different place, and we're talking about now performance testing. So over the course of the next five interviews, which will be done by myself as well as my colleague Damian White from WiseClouds, who's a performance architect, we're going to be talking about things that we've seen in working with customers. And to briefly summarize what the things we're going to be talking about are, we're going to talk today about the dangers of not fully testing a business process under load. The next interview, which Damon will be doing, will be talking about not calibrating your load test up front to factor in the number of business users versus virtual users. That's a common problem we see. I'll be mm -hmm. describing uh, later on in another interview why a lot of people don't go to the trouble of testing multiple load generation scenarios, strategies for things like that. Damien will follow up by talking about some of the most common security challenges that we see when testing, especially GUI-based APIs or APIs that have a GUI front end, very common kind of scenario. And I'll close out this series by talking about what happens when we don't factor in external API calls into our test plans. And that's a very common problem from a performance perspective, especially which is what this series is about. So quite excited to uh, talk to you guys about these things. So shall we get started with Talk the dangers of not performance testing a full business process. What do you say? Yeah, I look forward to listen to your opinion and uh, share your expertise uh, with uh, what mistakes, uh, uh, sure. what mistakes we we can do during API load testing and uh, what we need to pay attention in order to avoid that. All right. So I'll begin. Let me preface this by by way by saying that. From my perspective, an API equates to a microservice. I know you can get huge battles between uh, architects and developers saying, this is an API. No, it's microservices. From our perspective, it's the same thing. It's distributed software components that work together to achieve some kind of common goal. So with that said, out of the way, let's start by talking about the dangers or the common problem that we see of not fully performance testing a business process. So if you remember from the last interviews that I did with Tatiana, uh, which actually was a year ago, believe it or not. So uh, in, in that time, I would like to say things have improved in the industry. Unfortunately, we still see a lot of the same problems. One of them is you have these business processes, and it's hard enough to simply do functional tests from the API perspective on a business process. Most people, when they are testing their APIs, they are making single endpoint calls, one after the other, almost like a unit test on the API. A select few take those API calls and they batch them together into a functional test and execute the functional test as a cohesive unit. And even a smaller number of those people go to the extra trouble of taking that functional test and subjecting it to performance or load testing types of scenarios. And the problem behind that is if a lot of people, what they're doing is they're taking their individual API endpoints and subjecting them to load as well. So they're not testing the business process but are instead simply hammering on each individual endpoint with large volumes of data to see where it will fall, where it will fail. And that's fine. We don't say, don't do that. Go ahead and do that. But what we think is you also want to be testing your full API process. And I'll give you an example, the full business process on the APIs. So imagine you have an e-commerce site. And on your e-commerce site, let's say for the average user transaction, you've got maybe... 10 searches of the e-commerce site, 
maybe three items added to the cart, maybe one click of the checkout now button, right, to take payment and such. Mm -hmm. So it's a 10 to 3 to 1 ratio. If most people are not testing the API with 10 times the load on the lookup API calls and three calls, let's say, for putting things into the cart and one call for testing the output. So if you're not really testing the full business process, you miss all of those ratios. Now you can try to reverse engineer what those ratios might look like and fill it in in some way, but why not just use the appropriate full business process and place that under load? Tools such as Ready API and Load, and load UI let you do that very easily. The same functional test you design in SOAP UI, you bring across as a load test and you can then spin up as many instances of that load test and truly test the business process. So, uh, and uh, I suppose this is somehow related with the load testing scenarios that uh, testers should pay attention to. We're going to talk about that in one of my next sessions with you guys where I'm going to describe. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. No, it, 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 all, it all, by the way, I'm it all links together. I'm up to listen to all of this. That's right. It all links together. So, so everything that we describe in these series, it, it, think of it as building blocks that all kind of work together to come up with a cohesive result. That's what we're talking about here. So... Business processes are such an important thing. And by the way, it's a, I won't underplay the challenges here. A lot of times the business users can't even tell you what the actual use scenario is going to be like. So as testers or developers or architects, or whatever, it's kind of hard for you to figure out. But there are ways to do it or at least make a guess at it. And again, to be very clear, we are not saying do not test the individual endpoints under load. For sure, put them under stress, see where the smoke starts coming out of the machines, but try to take these things and put them together into the functional test. And by the way, if you're doing that anyway, it's just really simple to turn that functional test into a load test. It's the same process, except now it's being run by hundreds or thousands or millions of virtual users or virtual arriving processes to see where the actual business process will perform under load. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so for me, it sounds like uh, so you can test like uh, I how to say uh, I cannot say that uh, you can isolate API and test them as they are. But if you are testing them at the moment, it's okay. You can continue testing. But it Lord. is very important to like understand the uh, the the order. For example, if you if your test is calling one API and after that it is calling another API and again another API, you need to test the full path of this API. That's right. Is it correct? Because they don't operate in isolation, they operate as part of something larger. And that's why it's so important to do these kind of functional tests, number one, and number two, to do the functional test under load. You'll get such a better picture of what kind of performance and responsiveness you can get in runtime. Again, don't throw anything out. This is an additive type of thing. So for sure, keep testing your endpoints and see where they fall over. But try to gather these things together into a organized logical workflow because you need that anyway and then place that whole thing under load and ready api is superb at doing that it's very straightforward and it really can help you uncover some hot spots okay great uh, thanks that's uh, great advice so let's move forward to another one another, another mistake and uh, we will talk about it very soon so stay tuned all right everybody stay tuned we'll be back with more